Doma Sports Talk Worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now, before I get started, boom, there's that book again. You know what I'm saying? There it is. Check it out. Slapped against domestic violence, right? Slapped. Sisters' lives are prematurely put in danger, right? You're going through a lot right now, y'all. Go pick it up at Amazon. Doma Slapped against the domestic violence. It's $10. You can support domestic violence and the channel if you want to. I figured I'd leave with that because, you know, <clears throat> you got to do things to prevent domestic violence. Now, here's something that can prevent some domestic violence on your ass right now. Right? You got the fight of the year that I think, and it ain't happened yet. We don't, we're not sure when it's going to happen, but if it does happen, it's going to be the fight of the year from, as far as I'm concerned. And that's going to be the GWOAT in women's boxing. The GWOAT. Greatest woman of all time in boxing. And she's only 11 and 0 with two knockouts. Got to be Clarissa Shields, baby. She's like in two different divisions, undisputed, mean, got a mean streak to her, and will kick your butt. We know Clarissa Shields is all that. And let's listen. The reason why it's the fight of the year, because as Carissa Shields is the quote, two division undisputed. And if she fight this lady right here that I'm talking about, I don't know who's going to win. This is a 50-50 fight. So that's telling you, whoever I'm talking about got to be a good fighter. And that will have to be Savannah Marshall, you guys. Savannah Marshall. If you still haven't watched her, go somewhere and just look at a few highlights. I'm not sure how her highlights look. Uh, I told you guys several times how I seen her the first time. It was incredible, right? And I told you I hadn't been blown away by a female since Stranger Things, the girl who played Eleven, right? She blew me away. Matter of fact, I'm, you know, I'm on my fourth time watching it. I'm on season two again, watching it again. It's just that good, waiting on the, the fourth season to come. But Eleven blew me away. And Savannah Marshall was the same way the first time I saw her because I was going for her because I thought this girl who was talking all this smack was going to beat her up. Because she's quiet. That's why her nickname is a silent assassin. And it's so true because she was so quiet and, and, you know, timid that I thought, oh, man, I'm going for the quiet, timid girl. Because the other one was like, she's all arrogant. I'm going to whoop her butt, blah, blah, blah. And she came out there with some swagger, Savannah Marshall. And since then, I know this girl is awesome. And then later I found out that she has a win over uh, Clarissa Shields in the amateurs. Now, Clarissa Shields in the amateurs is like 64 and 1, right? So it can happen. But my point about Savannah Marshall is, you know how a lot of people lose in the amateurs and they fight this dude again, like Mike Tyson and Henry Tillman back in the day. You know, when they got to the pros, Tyson beat the hell out of Tillman. But he had beat him in the Olympics, right? This is not one of those cases. I don't think Savannah Marshall beating Clarissa Shields was an accident from what I'm seeing. All right? I haven't been impressed with a lady since, since Clarissa Shields. Right, Lila Ali impressed me too, but a lot of them are just open. You know, they swing in for the heels and they be open and, and, you know, neglecting that defense, you know, when they get into it. Savannah Marshall, y'all, is the truth. So, <clears throat> I think this will be the, uh, uh, the fight of the year if it does happen. Now, now uh, your girl Clarissa Shields has a fight coming up on February the 5th against a girl named Kuzman. Kuzin, right? Ima Kuzman. Now, she's 21-0-1 with 11 KOs herself. She's supposed to be a pretty bad chick. Now, uh, we'll see what happens. But it's the UK debut for Clarissa Shields in the pros. Because she signed for a new, uh, a new outfit called Boxer, I think it is. And it's the same outfit for Savannah Marshall. So what they're trying to do is, you know, get them hyped. Get uh, UK hyped. Have Savannah Marshall come to her fight. They're already talking stuff on Twitter. Matter of fact, you know, Savannah Marshall, which I know she's uncomfortable with talking smack because that's not her thing, but they probably have gotten in her ear and told her, listen, y'all about to have probably one of the biggest fights in women's history. You got to, you know, come out of your shell and say some things to Clarissa Shields. We ain't got to worry about Clarissa Shields. That's the Tyson Fury of, of, of women boxing. Clarissa gonna handle her business, and Clarissa got a little mean streak about it, which is like, and she ain't trying to hold her mouth for nobody. So we good with her. But Savannah's not like that. But Savannah, I know Clarissa respects her. I know it, you know, because it's the only thing. If if we didn't have some Savannah Marshall, then Clarissa Shields is all by herself out there, right? And now I know a lot of people be talking about Katie Taylor, but every time I watch Katie Taylor, it's a close fight every single time. You know, Katie Taylor, she's still winning these fights because it's on her home soil. But I'm, you know, I, Kaylee, there's no distance 
with Kaylee Taylor on her fights. She's still one of the best, right? But I think that Pearson girl gave her a, 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 a run for her money. And every time I look into Katie Taylor, it's a very close fight. And that decision, for, to me, looks like it can go any way. It's kind of like Canelo, you know? Canelo had close fights with Gennady, Gennady Golovkin, two of them. A uh, close one against Lara. A close one against Trout. A close one against Danny Jacobs. He was behind against Kovalev, behind against Billy Joe Saunders, and behind against Plant. Now, those behind... Yeah, I know a lot of people like, so what? Well, you was, because he came back and knocked all of them out. Billy Joe Sanders, Kovalev, and Plant. So, you know, you know, hats off to Canelo for handling that. But he does have a lot of close fights and stuff like that. Now, <clears throat> I know, you know, the records for Shields is 11 and 0 with two KOs. Savannah Marshall is 11 and 0 with nine KOs. She got a little bit more punching power. And somebody in one of the camps, I think Clarissa Shields' camp or somebody camp, was saying this is like, uh, your boy Sugar Ray Leonard versus Tommy Hearns one, and it really is. It really is. There's so many similarities. Like Tommy Hearns, right? Wasn't getting all that ballyhoo, you know. And everybody was talking Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Leonard. I was a Sugar Ray Leonard fan. I didn't care about nothing. Tommy Hearns, I was scared of, cause I seen the Pepino Cuevas knockout. I seen, you know, I'm like, how you gonna knock out Pepino Cuevas like that? Ain't nobody knocking out Pepino Cuevas like that. Right, and Tommy Hearns had a mean strength, thin, you know, because Tommy Hearns was like Deontay Wilder before Deontay Wilder, and he was, you know, thin, long, but was like I knocking people the hell out. So we were scared for Sugar Ray Leonard, but that was the very first time that Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Leonard, come out there scared of Thomas Hearns at the beginning and dancing around and stuff. Found out that Tommy Hearns is quick enough to still reach him. Closed up Sugar Ray Leonard's eyes, but Sugar Ray Leonard did. That's why Sugar Ray Leonard is a legend to the day, that Tommy Hearns fight, because he had to put them hands up. You're blowing it, son. You're blowing it. His trainer told him. The great, uh, my man, I, oh, man, I, I don't remember his name. That's ridiculous. But anyway, his trainer told him at the time, you're blowing it. And Sugar Ray put them hands up and had to come forward against Tommy Hearns. And had Tommy Hearns, after he got hurt Tommy Hearns, he had Tommy Hearns dancing. Matter of fact, matter of fact, Tommy Hearns could, could outbox too. That was a, a big, bad fight. Now, I would think the equivalent is Clarissa Shields and Sugar Ray Leonard, right? You know, bunches and bunches and this and that. Savannah Marshall got more knockout power and is a little bit taller, thin, but with knockout power. It's very similar. It's the best fight in, the, in, the, uh, in, in, in women's boxing for sure, and it's probably the best fight, period. Because all the fights of the men's, we ain't getting them. Like, let me be honest. Every fight that I want to see, I can't. Right? So I'm saying, that's why this fight gets my juices flowing. You know, the fights that get my juices flowing, like really why I'm happy a month before, would be Luis Ortiz versus Dillian White. I can't see it. Canelo Alvarez versus Demetrius Andre. It should be about damn time. It shouldn't exist that that's not, can't happen when the dude has been at 154 with Canelo, 160 at Canelo, want to go up to 168 to face him, and can't, and been a champion the whole time. Seven years. It's right next to you in parallel universes because they letting Canelo just have his own universe and don't have to fight these dudes. I'd like to see Canelo and Andre. I ain't going to see it. Probably never. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to see Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. Couldn't see it. Everybody arguing why they shouldn't fight. Two big old dudes. Anthony Joshua just a big old behemoth. And he just said the other day, I do everything calculated. Yeah, I know that. Tell your fans that you do everything calculated because you just calculate not to fight Deontay Wilder. That's when you calculated that. Yeah, well, I don't have to, then I ain't. That's what Canelo is doing the same thing. If I don't have to fight somebody and the media don't tell me that I got to, I ain't. Right? Period. Right? And another fight that, um, that I want to see is uh, uh, Devin Haney versus Cambosis because it's for Undisputed. Right? Probably won't get to see it. I'm hearing rumors that it's supposed to be happening, but uh, whatever. If there's a possibility to not do it, they won't. Now, Shields and Marshalls both haven't had that many fights, but neither did Lomachenko or Rigondeaux. You know, when you're good, you're good. You're going to handle your business early and get out of the amateurs and start beating up the dudes who's already been there forever because that's great. And Shields and Marshall are that great, right? So um, let's just see what happens. I want to say this about Canelo one more time. You know, we got people that would rather, like zone would rather lose money and then forcing Canelo to fight somebody hard. If you pay Canelo for 10 fights, 365 million, right? 365 million. And you ain't telling him exactly who the hell he got to fight. He's able to tell you, I, even though you signed Demetrius Andrade, I ain't fighting him. 
Even though you signed Janati Golovkin, I ain't fighting him. Then they paid Janati Golovkin and gave him some of the company. And he was able to say, I ain't fighting Demetrius Andre. I just ain't. Right? So the company, I'd rather lose money on these two dudes. And they still don't think about, hey, well, you know what? We still have Demetrius Andre on the contract. So what we're going to do, since we ain't these, we're paying all this money, we're going to tell on, on Canelo and Janati Golovkin and tell the world what they're saying behind negotiations that they don't want to fight this guy. And we'll make him the star. Right? Because we're going to tell the truth. That won't happen either. We'd rather you lose money than tell the truth and make Demetrius Andre the star. But don't worry about it. He's a star here. I don't give a damn about what the people are talking about. Y'all know that anyway. So I, that's what I'm saying. I watch boxing to, you know, the best should be fighting the best, and that's all it should be. But uh, it's just not that way. So, guys, while we're looking at this men's boxing, that's all we really want to look at. You know, I don't really look at that much women's boxing. I'm just saying, keep an eye on Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall. And for those that don't know Savannah Marshall, I've been saying it for a while, go get to know her, and you will realize that that's going to be a big fight and a good fight. And the winner of that coming out of that is going to be the very, very best. And let's make another thing clear. For Clarissa Shields, it's, a, it's really a blessing that she has someone who really, truly is a good fight for her. 50-50 fight, in my opinion. Some will probably have Shields probably a little bit more. She, she should be because she's more has more accolades and, and stuff like that. But when you're looking at both of them, you're looking at like, I don't know who's coming out of that one. That's why they probably are going to have a couple of fights. Let's see what happens. Get your juices flowing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go YouTube your girl Savannah Marshall and you'll see what I'm talking about. And you'll get as hyped as I am. Doma Sports Talk Worldwide. And I'm about to hear y'all.